very much, Speaker. My question is again to the acting premier, but I wanted just to address that uh, last point. Um, the Ontario Progressive Conservative Party built this province. The Ontario Liberal Party has broke this province. And under Kathleen Wynne and the Liberals, hydro rates have tripled. In fact, families pay a thousand more dollars per year than they did in 2003 when they took office. This government simply does not care about the people, and they certainly haven't been fair to the people of this province who are struggling between heating their home and eating food. There are still families that are making that difficult choice in this province. So, Mr. Speaker, is this the legacy the government of Ontario wants to leave, the fact that they are forcing people between heating and eating? Thank you. Well, uh, 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 Speaker, it's, it's quite a recollection of events that the party opposite had when they were in government because if they called shutting down schools all across the province as building province up, if they call shutting down hospitals. The member from Leeds Grenville is warned, the member from Simcoe Gray is warned, the member from uh, Bruce Gray Owen Sound is warned. If they call shutting hospitals all across the province as building the province up, if they call cutting welfare rates by 22 per cent uh, as building province up, uh, that's quite a legacy, Speaker. And then on top of that, they left a $5.6 billion wow. deficit, Speaker, on top of all that. So if that is their definition of building a, a yes, uh, up, no, thank you. We do not want to go back there again. We have seen that movie before, and that need not to be. We need to build this province up. Thank you. Supplementary. You want to talk about a movie? This is a nightmare watching you guys with the tiller. I'm telling you something, Speaker. That's why 2,000 people showed up to see Doug Ford on, on Monday night, because they want fairness. And the Premier win and the Liberals have accepted $1.3 million in donations from companies who received energy contracts. That meant these insiders resulted in families overpaying $9.2 billion on their hydro bills. Wow. Then, to make matters wow. worse, when Liberals sold off Hydro One, it was a fire sale that rewarded their donors, insiders, and fat cat friends. And that's why this government cannot be trusted anymore to do anything that is right or fair for the people of Ontario. Doug Ford has said he will reduce hydro Question. rates even further. Why won't this government do what Doug Ford wants? Economic Development and Growth. Minister of Economic Development. Thanks, thanks very much, Speaker. It's adorable to watch the member across talk about Doug Ford <laughs> and the crowd, the crowd that showed up to see him. Speaker, I'm guessing, I'm guessing those individuals that showed up. Uh, fully expected, as they should, given that party's track record and their new leader's track record, that they were heading out for a night to watch a slasher flick, Speaker, because that's exactly, <laughs> that is exactly what that party and that particular new leader, a leader I would suggest, notwithstanding the bluster that we hear in that question, a leader that that party is just a little bit nervous about because we know fully that most on that side didn't support his leadership campaign, Speaker. And in particular, as our Minister of Energy mentioned just the other day, I think it's really important. Back on March the 5th, a leading member of Ontario's Conservative Caucus said what every single Ontarian fully understands with his, and I'm quoting here, Speaker, with his erratic and out of control behavior, I worried that if Doug Ford was to lead our party, he would lead us to certain defeats, Speaker. I will say, that would be the member from Prince Edward Hastings. I will say, as a proud Ontarian, if Doug Ford ever takes over the leadership of this province, we are doomed, Speaker. Order. I'm uh, disappointed. We're heading down a path I don't know that anyone wants to go down and anyone wants to hear. Final supplementary. Thanks, Speaker. I just want to address something. Would the minister call one of his male colleagues adorable, and does he think that's appropriate, and will he apologize to me? The government's own internal documents and the Auditor General have confirmed that if the Liberals are re-elected, Ontario's electricity rates will skyrocket to the highest that they have ever been. They can't be trusted. They don't care. They are too glib to continue governing this province. So, Mr. Speaker, the question is simple. Why doesn't this government support long lasting and real relief for hydro customers across Ontario, or are they still only concerned with trying to eke out an election win in less than 78 days? Thank you. 
Chief Government Whip is uh, warned. Minister. Speaker, I would first say to the member asking the question, if I, if I, if I said anything that, uh, that was taken the wrong way or that was offensive, my apologies. It wasn't intended to be delivered that way, so I apologize for that. What I would say, what I would say Speaker, and I, and I want to echo what I did say in the House the other day about this, I think it's perfectly appropriate for leaders of political parties and for political parties to have very strong views about what they should do with the future of the province if they aspire to become the premier. But I think in 2018, there is a core responsibility that aspiring premiers have, and that responsibility is to have the courage of their convictions and to level with the people of Ontario. And I think it's clear. The member from Lanark, for Atlantic and Addington, is warned. Carry on. Because I was saying, I think it's abundantly clear that, as we've seen so far, neither any member of Ontario's Conservative Caucus or their newly minted leader, Doug Ford, have the courage of their convictions to level with the people of Ontario and freely admit what kind of damage you would do, who you would hurt, who you would harm, and what public services you would eviscerate if you have the chance to form government. And I don't think it's too much to ask for you to have Answer. the courage and admit exactly what kind of damage you will do should you form, should you form power. Thank you very much.